morning and welcome to everybody and welcome to our latest webinar on my home workstation challenges. I'm very fortunate today. I'm not going to be doing this session alone. I've got my colleague Jodie, who is a senior assessor um, with us, and she's going to be joining us today. There you go, Jodie. Excellent. Good morning. Morning. Um, Jodie is, has a background in physiotherapy, stress management and teaching. And like me, Jodie is very passionate about health and well-being and in particular ergonomics, um, trying to prevent um, ill health and also promote, you know, productivity and efficiency. So um, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to give you some tips this morning. We're very fortunate to have a number of guests with us this morning who kindly provided us with some information and some pictures so we can have, a, I hope, an informed discussion with them about how to improve um, or add value, I suppose, to their home workstations. I think as we all adjust from the pandemic, you know, some of those hastily put together workstations um, have now become more in permanent use with hybrid working. And I think now is a good time to just stop and say, you know, is my home workstation really what I wanted to be going forwards? And so that's what I'm hoping that we're going to do today is to try and provide some tips and to try and provide some guidance. As normal, we should have time for questions at the end of the session. So please, could you use the Q&A box if you wish to ask us a question and we'll see what we can do. We're also going to be following up this webinar with an email, so hopefully with some tips and some information in that too. So I hope you look forward to that. And also you'll have a link to the recording um, as normal. So if you miss any bits or you think the um, webinar is helpful to anybody else, please feel free to, to pass it on. I think really without any further ado, I'm going to um, invite Elizabeth to um, un un put her camera on. And um, and let's have a look at, at what's going on. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, morning. Morning, morning. Morning, morning So, <laughs> Elizabeth, so you provided us with this, this lovely picture um, to start us off with. And um, I just wanted to sort of take what I saw from this. First of all, I love old furniture and I just adored um, Elizabeth's desk. However, I did see a few concerns with it. Um, now, luckily, Elizabeth says she's not having any pain, although she does work three long days at this desk. She obviously has a laptop and an adjustable height chair, but no other adjustments, I think, within that. But she does say that she breaks um, every hour. I was, I have to say, very surprised when in her information she said she didn't have any pain. Um, and I was rather hoping that she probably wasn't inputting on her keyboard. So can I have next slide to show a lovely picture that she shared with us of how she works at her workstation. There we go. Now, now, I don't think you necessarily need to be an ergonomist to sort of say what perhaps I was concerned about. So, Elizabeth, how much do you actually type in this sort of position for? Um, I type a lot from that position and I realise it does look rather ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> a lot of, I've got a lot of paper around me, haven't I? And that's because I'm kind of looking a lot at uh, different things at the same time. So I wonder whether I'm actually positioning my computer in the most sensible place um, on that huge desk that you saw there. Um, I maybe that's something that I need to think about. It is. I mean, I was particularly concerned. Oh, I've lost my arrow, but there you go. I was particularly oh, yes. concerned about the about the shoulder. Let me let me clear that and actually use a an, uh, a proper thing rather than that. I was concerned about your shoulder. Yeah. I'm concerned about your arm. And also I'm concerned that we've got no back support going on. So those are the three areas that, that really sort of concern me. So what I really wanted to do is, is what I need to do is actually bring your arms closer towards you because what your arms should be by the sides of your of your body now i'm thinking that actually first of all having a separate keyboard would allow you to actually put your keyboard close to where you are um and have you thought about using a separate keyboard at all yes i have actually so that's some, that's a that's a good tip to start with so where would you position the keyboard then further further towards me further towards you so your arms can hang by your body because then it's going to reduce all that tension 
that that well you're not feeling but I suspect in time you will feel all that mm. tension sort of round here if we can actually start to bring your your arms close together your arms mm. close towards you you may well also need um probably a document holder as well possibly yeah. with the amount of paper because if you can <laughs> raise that up then, yeah. then actually your head is going to be in a better position um I think you know if we also gave you a laptop stand mm-hmm. most of them come with a, a document holder in front of them so you could actually have your screen up at a better height closer to you paperwork in front of you and your yeah. keyboard there I think that would really get you back um in a much better position mm-hmm. and closer to your and and it would allow you to sit back in your chair um it is unfortunate that your desk is so thick because that does mm. compromise your sitting height. It might be worth trying getting a, a different style of chair or perhaps using a wedge. So when you're sitting on your seat, your bottom is slightly higher than your knees. and It might just give you a little bit more wiggle room to sit as a slightly better position at your desk too. Mm-hmm. So I think really, you know, raising your laptop, getting some paperwork between yourself and the screen, separate keyboard, try perhaps a different chair or a wedge on your chair, just to bring everything back closer to you. I think you'll feel a lot better for that. What do you think about the cushion? Do you think more cushions remove the cushion? I would, I think when you get your arms closer, you will need to be higher. So I think if you can get your another cushion, that would be yeah. helpful. But I'm just worried about catching your thighs on the bottom of the, the, the desk. So I think there's going to yeah. be a compromise here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it may be worth considering going a step further, um, maybe even putting a platform or something on your desk so you could stand to, to work a little bit. Absolutely, um, yeah. You know, so you could have a variation of, because I know you really want to keep that desk and I'm sure mm-hmm. that most of us, we don't have space for two desks. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe actually putting a platform on there too might be useful. So um, yeah, just, that's great, uh, I guess. Mm. yeah. Is, is, any other particular questions you want to ask? I think I would love to know what to do with my feet when I'm, when I'm working. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I have a very bad habit of tucking my leg underneath my bottom as I'm working, which then leaves me with dreadful pins and needles if I don't move around very much. Do you I'm know what? I, I'm um, so glad you mentioned that. Um, yes, I'm glad you recognise that that's a very poor position. I would suggest if you can get a, a footrest, preferably one that perhaps rocks so you can get a bit right. of movement because that, that sounds to me as if you're not taking enough breaks, you're not getting enough movement mm. because your body's trying to find different positions. So I would suggest a footrest with a bit of movement in it and I think you'd feel a lot more comfortable. So feet shouldn't necessarily be on the ground. They could be on something then. Is that what you're saying, Catherine? They can indeed, as long as mm. we don't bring them up too high. We don't yeah. want your knees coming up too high. So mm. a, a small foot support with a bit of movement, I think possibly ideal. It's difficult to see from there whether you mm. need how much, how, much, how much distance you need. But you want mm. good support, but a bit of movement, I think. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. So does, does that help? Yeah, definitely. It's given me lots of ideas and I hadn't thought about actually raising the height of the desk by putting something under each leg as well. I hadn't actually thought about that, which is yeah. really good idea. That might help, but we can we can as I say as 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 you have to play around with things, we can we can we can talk more about that in the future. But I, but I hope that's given you some some Great. nice thoughts. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Catherine. That's brilliant. Well, th- thank you for your time and thank you for sharing. Because I think sometimes it's um a bit awkward when you know things aren't quite right. But putting yourself out there. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, Catherine. Brilliant. On to um, is Jonathan with us? I am, yes. Ah, fantastic, my Jonathan. Video. Yeah, hi. That's right. Because I'm delighted that you've joined us because you work with the Stroke Association, don't I you? I do, Dr. yes, I yes. do indeed, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and that's that's our 
Postrite's chosen charity. So it's I, yeah. fantastic to have you with us today. Very thank aware you. of that. And thank you for your, your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's an important charity for many, many reasons. So you've provided us with these pictures um, of, of your workstation. I just really want to go through a, a few points um, that I picked out from the information you gave us. Um, so you, you, you say that you do get occasional neck and forearm pain and a bit of eye strain as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you think that actually some of the pain might be non-workstation related. Uh, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think that's very honest. Mm -hmm. um, but the body is a whole thing. And, you know, it's important that we try and make the best of it or, or, you know, with all the um, situations. You obviously work a lot of time at this desk. And you don't take many breaks, which we will we will talk about. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and just looking at this, I was concerned about the height of your screen, the yeah. distance the keyboard was away from the desk, a little bit as I was saying to Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And I am a little concerned to see that non-adjustable chair. But until we see you at the workstation, it's we we're never sure whether that's a problem or not. Yeah. So, Let's move on to, to the next picture of you actually working at your workstation. Yeah. There we go. So now, and this bears out my concern mm -hmm. um, of, first of all, where the keyboard is. As okay. we can see, yeah. your arms are forwards. Mm -hmm. And again, similar to Elizabeth, I'm concerned about the tension going on here. Yeah. And I'm concerned about sort of the, the tension here because your arms are designed to sort of be relaxed by your body and as soon as so you bring them forwards it that, creates a bit of tension the, this should be more of a right angle sort of um so it, it, absolutely that's very interesting and very easily solved actually as well so <laughs> i've just moved my keyboard forward towards me now so yeah there we go yeah hopefully easy you may <laughs> you may well find a little bit as we were talking about you know we may find that you're sitting a bit low now you may find your elbows are dipping beneath the desk a bit but we we, we, we can talk about that yeah. a little bit in a minute mm -hmm. the other thing that bothers me um let me clear those arrows um is actually wrong one beg your pardon my technology skills are not very good. Your chin. Okay. So your chin is coming forwards, <laughs> yeah. which again is going to create a bit of tension back here. Mm -hmm. um, and or, or you're also lifting your chin up a little bit, and that creates a lot more tension back here. Okay. And this yeah. is because if you look at your where your eyes are, mm -hmm. they are pretty much in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really, we want your eyes eye level at the top of the screen so, so when you're looking at the middle of the screen your head is in a neutral position yeah yeah i mean i actually was very i'm aware that the screen is too high and the camera they've got a camera on top of the screen so that that sort of accelerates things it's the design of the desk that is i think i'm struggling with the way the way you we obviously can see the raised bit with the um i, 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 think, I thought maybe even take that that does come off so maybe it would be sensible just to move that I think so. I think so. Just going to run um, a little video to talk about the keyboard distance, and then mm. we'll come back to the height of the desk. So okay. Just going to run this for you. This is the best position for your keyboard, nice and close, so your arms are relaxed by your body. If your keyboard is positioned further away, you need to reach. This will create tension at your shoulder, down your arm. And after a period of time, what you will do is you'll look for support. You'll start leaning on your arms, creating pressure but also coming forwards and losing back support from the chair. So if we now sort of go on, so hopefully that explains the arm it, position. It does, yeah. You know, yeah. okay, so so as I say, I'm now concerned about, you know, the, your chin and your forward. So you said that that, um, the, the, the the razor can come the razor the, the razor is literally freestanding um Perfect. so i do find it quite useful for putting pens and stuff i mean i could stick it under the desk i guess so yeah, that, that's fine so it, yeah, yeah i'm aware that that is an issue it doesn't feel natural to be honest with you so if i took the razor off and then i want the top of my screen and camera eye level about about eye level so when you're looking at the middle of the screen you just put your head down like you would if you were reading a book or something yeah, like that just that's, nice and relaxed that's very doable um and i mean the, the screen's adjustable so that I, can, I can do that but i will do that's that after fine. this call well you could do and you know yeah. if you find that you move your things around you might what you could consider a monitor on too and you can get one for your laptop so if, 
for me, with my aging eyes, I sometimes pull screens towards me, push them away, and I do it with my laptop too. And so, so what's that called, find... Catherine? A monitor arm? A monitor arm, yes. Okay, yeah. And that and, means you can um, move it forward and backwards. More forward, but up, down, and it also leaves you know, a clear space on the desk. So yes, you've got a lot of stuff, this is, which this is, you might have. Yeah, exactly. That that's. I mean, it's a bit. It looks a bit sort of plenty of stuff on it there, but that's actually quite clear in that picture. And I often I have my a writing pad. I'm a bit old school. I still write stuff. So I've got my writing pad in front of me, then my keyboard, and that's why I've been leaning forward. So I quite like the idea of a document and being the the case study before about a document stand. That might, I think that might work. Work. And well if you had me. a monitor arm, I think I think you'd find that that would. Yeah. Help. Yeah. I think the other thing you may find is actually an adjustable chair might help you. Once you've got the, the workstation set mm. out, you may find you're not sitting quite at the right height with enough back support. Okay. So you may want to consider a chair that will actually give you that mm. flexibility um, to make sure you've got good back support at the right height. But yeah. get your get the, the things on your desk right first and mm -hmm. then see how your height goes before, yeah. before thinking that. You are spending a lot of time at your workstation, so... Um, it may be a good investment for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's a couple of things there that I can I can action very quickly. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, if any further questions, we can we can pick up at a later date. But um, I hope that's given you a little bit of something. It now. certainly has. It certainly has, Catherine. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Right. I think we're going to be moving on next to, to James. And I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Jodie, who's going to have a chat with James. So over to you guys. Hi, all. Hi, James. Hi, uh how are you? Good. Very good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. So um, thank you for sending over the information. Um, so I've had a look through and we can see that you're working from home three days a week, but spending quite a long time at the workstation um, with some back to back meetings causing you to sit for, you know, more than sort of four hours at a time, um, which is quite a long time to be spending at a computer. Although your workstation um, equipment itself is very good, uh, you were just wanting to find out if your workstation was set up optimally. Um, and there was some mention of the discomfort from hunching over the keyboard. So in terms of your setup, if we go to the next slide, um, we can see that you've got the sit stand desk, which allows you to either sit or stand at the workstation and the screens are in a very good position. So you've got them at eye level and the mouse and keyboard are nice and close to you. But what we are concerned about is your sitting height. So with the sitting height, we ideally want about a 90 degree bend at the elbow and your forearms to be level with the desk. So we've got a short video just to give um, an example of how we would ideally like the elbows to be placed. So if we have a look at that video now, we can see that from Catherine. This is the position when your seat is at the correct height relative to the keyboard and the desk. If I sit too low, you can see it affects the pressure that's on at the wrist. If I sit too high, you can see again there's pressure at the wrist, there's angle at the wrist, and actually you can see that I'm tipping forwards. Thank you. So with your position, James, um, it might be that you're tipping forward. So ideally, we would suggest lowering the chair. Is that something that you would be able to achieve or would that potentially affect the position of your lower limbs? No, that's uh, I'm quite tall, but that's easily remedied. Excellent. Okay. Not the height. I can't remedy my height, but I can remedy the seat. The chair height. Yeah. yeah. Fab. So. Ideally, we're, we're looking for the 90 degrees bend at the elbow, and then we want about a 90 degree bend at the hips and the knees as well. So we want to make sure that the knee remains in line with the hip or the knees a little bit lower than the hip line. In terms of your movement, how often would you say you are standing to work at the desk? Not enough. Um, I would say maximum half an hour a day. Okay. so. 
There's some movement advice we can give to you, which is based on the, the Hedges 3 ideal. And that's a piece of research that was done at Cornell University. And it talks about finding a, a balance between sitting, standing and moving through the day. So the idea that they've come up with, uh, which is, is, is supposed to be optimal for creating movement through the day, is to break the day up between 30 minute chunks of 20 minutes sitting, eight minutes standing and stretching or moving for two minutes. So that is something that could be used as a bit of a guide for you to try and break your day up and, and prevent you from sitting for long periods. I understand that with, with the sit stand desk that you've got, it's a slot desk, so it doesn't manually move up and down or electrically. You, I think you have to move the equipment itself. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So it might be worth just thinking about um, looking at are you using the laptop and the monitor frequently or maybe just the one screen um, so that when you're moving the equipment between the two platforms at the top, you're just moving the one screen what, rather than having to move everything. Uh, because if you are moving as frequently as every 30 minutes, that, that might be quite disruptive for you. Alternatively, a monitor arm um, could be used just so that you rather than moving the screens on the shelving, you can just move the monitor arm up and down. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can do that, definitely. Excellent. Um, so in terms of the, the, the time that we suggest for stretching and moving in, in those two minutes of, of that 30 minute period, that could be anything from stretching and moving at the desk or you know moving away from the workstation, going up and down the stairs, into the garden if you're lucky enough to have a garden, um, looking outside, having a little nose, see what's going on, or going off to get a drink or a snack. And, you know, it can be anything from, a, you know, a, a few seconds changing your posture or moving to, you know, one or two minutes of movement. So I would say with the chair that you've got, that's quite a good chair. So, um, you know, it, it looks like it's got quite a good amount of adjustability on it. Um, I would say for anyone that has got um, a chair that they're unsure of the adjustments, if you have a look for the manufacturer or the model of the chair, this can usually be found on the backrest or underneath the seat pan or maybe on a little label hanging down. And if you can find the name of the chair, you can Google it and you should be able to find a manual and that should give you the instructions for how to adjust your chair. And that will help you to adapt your uh, position at the workstation. I think with your chair, it, it suits you well. It's supporting you, um, you know, in a, in a suitable posture. You're, you're upright and um, it's really just the sitting height that we need to get adjusted there for you um, to make sure that you're, you're, we're preventing you from hunching over the keyboard. Um, so is that OK, James? Have you got any questions? Nope, I've already uh, adjusted the height of my chair as we're speaking and someone put in there about setting a reminder to stand. I think I'll do that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. And there's lots of little gadgets that can be used now to do that. You know, we've got the Fitbits that buzz to tell you to get up. You can get apps on the phone. Some people use egg timers um, or even, you know, little calendar um, in 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 puts on their computer um, so there are lots of, of different options for trying to naturally incorporate the movement so that you, you know you can get on with your job and you don't have to keep thinking right I've got to get up now what's the time um, so hopefully that will give you something to think about and the hedges three idea that can be found on our website as well in the help and advice section on a pdf um, but we can send it through to you afterwards James and hopefully that will help All great right. thank you Thank you very much, James. Yeah, bye. Back over to Catherine. Thanks, Jodie. Rob, are you are you with us, Rob? Hello, hello. Uh, fantastic. So, Rob, so this is the information that, that, that you provide us with. Some some nice pictures there. Obviously, very musically talented as well. Um, but you sort of said that you get some back, neck, and shoulder ache, but that improves with movement, which actually is generally the case and, and it's something that we always encourage people to do is, is sort of move frequently you are using this workstation obviously the majority of your working week 
does look like your your screen your top screen is is high um but you also use a laptop but i see that you have a, a small keyboard and, and the mouse is nicely placed in, close to it i was a little concerned to see the keyboard underneath the desk though thinking that might be creating a bit of restriction um and um and you also gave me another picture showing you using the workstation where you can see it there on the left you know with the with the keyboard in place and i was a bit concerned about the the, the laptop to to the right hand side so that sort of set the scene so can i have the next slide please so this is some pictures that you you provided with us with actually how you work um and i think it it tells a very clear story which 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 is nice so as you can see, I'm concerned actually more about when you're using the laptop, because if we look at the head position here, your head is now angling down um, and that is going to create tension at the back of the neck, which I know that, that you do feel. Um, so I think we'll be looking to try and raise that laptop screen up a little bit. However, you've got the opposite thing going on with your screen at the top and the fact that in this picture, we can see you tipping your head back, which is causing a different sort of tension, more of a stretching tension, and the other is more of a, of a maintenance type tension. Do you find that you get um, discomfort the longer that you're, you're working on either of those um, devices? Uh, yeah, um, so this is a relatively new setup for me. Uh, I, I recently changed the desk and actually, the the pedestal part of it mm -hmm. is um, is 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 just a little bit too high uh, right. for me to put my laptop on, um, and it means that my screen is also too high and my big mm. screen. So, I agree with everything you said. I'm 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 conscious of that. Um, I'm thinking of actually just taking the pedestal away, um, and then I can adjust the height of both of them um so so that i have a a straight back and a straight neck um but i do get um i i do get issues if i sit for for too long mm. um so i make sure that i get up quite a lot and, and um and, and I do stretches and things like that. Which, which is fantastic because we have to remember that our bodies are, are, are very adaptable and actually very resilient if we get that balance right between, you know, overusing them and movement. The body actually is very good, but we've just got to give it those opportunities to, to, to recover. Um, and and that, that does very well. Um, I'm just going to play a video just to talk about screen height and then I'm just going to come back on, on this again. So could we just play that video? So this would be a good screen position for me. So it's at about arm's distance. I'm at the top of the screen about eye height. That way my head is in a nice position and I've got good support from the chair. If now I raise the screen, look what happens to my chin. So if I raise the screen, to look at the screen, I have to raise my chin up and this creates tension at the back of the neck. If I then push the screen further away, as well as keeping it high, I have this poor head position, but also I come away from the chair and lose back support. So I hope that just sort of solidifies what we were talking about that. Um, so does that platform that you've got the screen and your speakers on, does it easily come off? uh well it, it it's not uh, adjustable so um but but yeah i mean it's just a question of getting a screwdriver and unscrewing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a shame because i mean obviously it, 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 it's a lovely facility to have but again i think a little bit um like we said earlier you might be somebody who actually benefits from having monitor arms both for your laptop and for your screen and then you could you know, you could use your, the workstation in a different way for different activities you do, because obviously you are doing different activities, um, you know, with your with your musical um, side and also your sort of more administrative type side. And that would give you quite a lot of flexibility. Yeah. So the one so the large screen is actually on a, an adjustable arm, which moves up, down and out. Uh, yes. Uh, the the laptop at the moment is um, 
is uh, actually perched on a little sort of like plastic cage. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely uh, take on board what you're saying and, um, and agree with you. Because I think every, most other things about that workstation seems to work really quite nicely. Do you, do you find you're restricted underneath with the um, with the with that keyboard under there? Do you find it hits your shins, or do you find actually you can get well into the workstation? It doesn't restrict your ability to come in. No, the actual cutout on the desk uh, at the bottom actually yeah. is, is the restriction, not the keyboard. The keyboard is actually placed on on the uh, on on the um, the desk there right and that's actually um a a small platform with a cutout in it which is about four inches off the uh, the floor mm -hmm. so I, I i can't put my legs in any further than that anyway and, right uh, the, the previous desk i had was simply just just a desk um and i could actually stretch my legs out every mm -hmm. now and again which I think also helps. So I'm not, although I, I bought this desk because I wanted to have more space in and around the desk so that I wasn't continually moving things, but actually I'm, I'm not entirely sure that it's right for me. I think it, it is difficult. There are lots of different designs, but I, often, you know, the more options you have, quite often it's better because then you can place things where you want and you're not having restrictions I do find that some some of these computer desks often don't fit for what everybody needs and if you've got long legs you know it can cause restrictions so mm. um but I yeah. think overall it, it, you've got good light as well you've got lovely light coming from the side which is lovely um and I think you know your chair looks like it's well adjusted for you so I think there's a lot of good things but I think it, you would find a lot more comfort if we could get that screen those screens really positioned in a better position for you yeah thanks for that that's all right is there anything else or are you um, i say you can always come back to us at a future date if there's anything else you want to discuss no not really i mean you've uh, you've covered everything and uh, as i say I, I i agree with with your analysis so thank you for that that's always useful thank you rob thank you jody can i hand back to you Hello. Hi, have we got Kate? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Kate. Thank you for joining us. No problem. So we've had a look at your workstation um, and the information that you provided. So thank you for sending that over. And I can see that you work from home quite a few days, four days a week um, and spending quite a long time at and eight hours a day at a time mm. at the desk, um, sitting for more than sort of two hours and sometimes back to back meetings. Um, some of the issues that you raised were neck, shoulder, upper back aches, and then some eye fatigue, headaches, and migraines. And I understand that you've put some of that furniture together um, from what you had existing at home and, um, you know probably like a lot of people had to sort of throw things together through the pandemic to try mm. and try and make it work um so what we are hoping to do is to look at what a, an ideal desk setup would look like for you um and then we we'll move on to some tips for improving posture and, and exercises as an overall as well mm -hmm. so if we move to the next slide um there are quite a few points um, to, to go through with, with your setup. So first of all, with the chair, now obviously that's quite a basic chair and, and probably a lot of people will be using something very similar. Mm. Um, you know, we don't all have sort of a, a, an office ergonomic chair to use at home. So a lot of people are sitting on these sta static style chairs. Now, the issue here is that it's causing you to, to lose the natural curve in your spine. So really what we want the, the spine to have this nice S shape and we want it to be supported by the backrest. And here we can see that you are lacking that support in the curve mm -hmm. of the lower back. So what's happening is you're getting a flattening of the lumbar spine rather than it being nice and curved. And that's then having a knock on effect in your upper body posture as well. So we can see here that the head and the shoulders are coming out of alignment. So 
the head is actually coming into that forward position. So, you know, it, it's it's quite a slouch posture and I can see there's that sort of leaning on the table as well, which sometimes mm. we might do just to try and take a bit of pressure off. Um, again, that that's something that could be further exacerbated by uh, the, the screen as well. You know, looking at laptop screens, they are quite small. We tend to struggle to get them at a close position as well. So that forward head position that, that's created by that lack of support in the chair could be aggravated by that that laptop screen as well. The other important thing to look at is the position and support that you're getting in the lower limbs. So ideally in this area, we want your thighs to be supported with a little bit of a gap uh, between the back of your knee and the edge of the seat. So in this chair, obviously with it not being adjustable, we, we can't get that that support improved for the, the thighs. We can't get the support improved for the back. So really here, we would suggest an alternative chair for you. Um, something where you've got a five-star base with wheels and a swivel gas stem. So you've got that adjustability at the base to get in and out of the workstation. And then the adjustability on the seat to give you the, the right support for your thighs, that can help reduce strain transferring into the lower back and further up the spine. And then an adjustable back support so that your spine can be supported in a more natural upright working position that promotes the natural S shape of the spine and brings the head back into alignment as well. Now with the, the screen area, um, do you use the laptop and the external monitor sort of with a 50-50 split? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I do actually now have a laptop. That, oh, brilliant. That was a box so I'd literally just moved in when you took that photo. But yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I kind of split screen. So like you usually have my emails and stuff on the laptop and then do most of like bigger screen work on the on the big monitor, which you can't see very well in this picture. Um, but yeah, so I, it is pretty much 50 50, I would say. OK, that's fine. So with the laptop stand, have you found that that's uh, achieved a higher position for, for the laptop yeah, screen? Yeah, it is actually. I think where I'm sitting at it now, it is sort of eye level. Excellent. So generally with with dual screens, if we're using them sort of 50 50, we ideally want the join directly in front of us so mm -hmm. that we've got an equal head movement side to side. If you were using the larger monitor, um, so it kind of demonstrates that in this picture because you're kind of a little bit twisted to the to the side when you're looking at yeah. that larger monitor. If you were using that more, so maybe a 60 40 or 70 30 split, that might cause a prolonged twisted position when you're looking at the monitor. So we would just suggest having the monitor a bit more central just to avoid mm -hmm. those twisted positions. And with the laptop stand, they are quite good because it tends to, to flatten the keyboard. So you, you tend to be able to get the, the laptop screen at a closer position mm -hmm. and that can then help to reduce that forward head posture as well. The other thing that I noticed was the um, the mouse area. So the, the desk space on that that bit round the mouse is quite limited, isn't it? Mm. Um, so potentially you could be be sort of holding your arm in in an awkward position or tense in the arm when you're using the mouse due to a lack of space. Mm -hmm. So something that could be considered in that respect is a compact keyboard if somebody's got limited desk space and they're not able to get a larger desk we're looking to optimize the space on the work surface so with a compact keyboard that just chops the number pad off um, you can get ones where it's separate so if you do need it you can you bring it back into position but that would then free up a bit more space on the right hand side for you to use the mouse as well mm. so in terms of um, with the position that we ideally want at the workstation. If we move on to the next slide, 
we've got a nice little diagram here that gives some advice on uh, some of the things I've mentioned about the position that we're working at in the chair and at the, the screen. So ideally, we want the arms relaxed down by the side of us. And when we come into that upright working position, you'll find that the arms naturally fall back by the side of the body. So working on a different chair would hopefully make sure that your arms are positioned correctly to try and reduce any extra strain that might be happening in that area mm -hmm. and when it, the arms come back into position and we're sitting upright it brings the head back as well so it balances the head nicely on the shoulders and that can reduce a lot of strain that might go through the shoulder areas the screen again going back to what Catherine said we want the screen at about an arm's length away We've got to bear in mind if people are using uh, prescription lenses, you've got different you know, distances there. Um, certain applications that you might be using on screen might be smaller or larger. So you know, don't be afraid to kind of move that screen around through the day, depending on what task you're doing, because we want the screen to move for you rather than your body adapting to the screen. And again, with the, the eye level, um, as Catherine mentioned, we want the tops of the screen to be at eye level. If you are using anything like varifocals and you're looking down through the lenses, you might need the screen a little bit lower. So that's just something to bear in mind as well. If we move on to the next slide, we can see here the angles that we're trying to achieve with the chair position. So with the um, feet, we want to make sure that your feet are supported flat on the floor or with use of a footrest. So at the moment, because you've got that static chair, it mm. might be a bit difficult to, to get your legs in a comfortable position. But with an adjustable chair, you can position the sitting height so that your arms are level with the desk. And then if you need to, you can pop a footrest in to make sure that your feet are supported. And then hopefully with a suitable back support, you'll find that your spine will be nice and straight and, and promote that natural S shape. And hopefully with the seat, if it's adjustable as well, you'll be able to ensure that you've got the correct gap between the back of your knee and the edge of the seat. So the sort of angle um, we want are 90 degrees at the elbows, 90 degrees at the hips and 90 degrees at the knees. And then we're looking for about a two to four finger space between the back of your knee and the edge of the seat pan as well. So the other thing I wanted to just mention was the um, headaches and eye strain. So I know we mentioned about the screen position um, and the head position that could be adding to some of the tension that might build up in the neck and the shoulders and the head. But there's other things to consider, which is things like glare coming from the window, which I could see you had near to the side of you. Um, mm. So it's just important to make sure people have um, curtains or blinds that can be used to cancel out any glare that might be bouncing off the screen into the eyes um, or potentially using um, a, a sort of anti-glare filter on the screen. A lot of the newer screens now have the anti-glare filters built in. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through um, what I've done in my setup at home to sort of demonstrate how you could maybe change yours to, to provide mm -hmm. an optimal position. So if we go on to the next slide. So you'll see in the first photo, this is probably quite a good demonstration of how many people's setups at home would look like and probably look like through the pandemic, um, often used at a kitchen table with a kitchen or dining chair. And, and, and cluttered as well. So what we want to do is looking at the second picture, we want to make sure that we're clearing the space underneath for the lower limb positioning. We're clearing the space on the surface. So we've got plenty of room to accommodate our equipment and our work tasks. And then we can also look at adding supports onto the chair. So with your chair, it was a bit difficult because you'd got that gap. Um, mm -hmm. So that would be hard to add a lumbar support in. Um, but here we can see we've got the support added to the back area and that can help to promote that natural S shape in the spine. And then we've got the cushioning on the seat, which is the wedge that Catherine was talking about earlier that can help to lift the, the 
your sitting height, but also encourage that nice angle at the, the pelvis and just bring the knees slightly lower than the hip line, which can mm-hmm. help reduce um, strain on the lower back. And then we've just got a cushion in the lower part to use as a footrest. Then also what we've done is we've used a box to elevate the laptop. So a bit similar to what you did, you've used, you were using paper in that Mm. last um, slide and now obviously you've got the laptop stand which allows you to adjust the height of the screen so that you can get it to the optimal position and then we've implemented the keyboard and the mouse and you can see that that's a compact keyboard so it it creates extra space on the right hand side for any sort of handwritten notes that you might be needed. Mm. So if we move on to the next slide This is sort of showing what we were talking about with the natural S shape of your spine. So the first picture shows what probably a lot of people look like when we're out and about. Um, And really, we want to try and create this nice natural um, curve in the spine. So if we move on to the next slide, we can see that we've improved the, the setup even further. So we've introduced that laptop sand like you have, which is adjustable. So we can make sure we can get that at the right height. And then we've implemented the, the, the DSE um, office chair as well. So you've got the five star base with wheels there. So that allows you to get in and out of the workstation comfortably. And then we've got the backrest adjustability, the seat pan adjustability and the armrest. So that's giving you all those areas of extra support. So Mm. this is the sort of chair that, you know, you might find really, really useful in in giving you that um, improvement of posture and allowing you to rest back into the chair and letting that support you in your natural working position. So does that does that sort of help you with with your setup um, concerns? Yeah, definitely. I know my setup's appalling. It's just one of those things that you just sometimes never get around to sorting out. Um, But yeah, that's really helpful. Um, I actually also lowered, I didn't realise my screen was too high, but I actually lowered that when I was on the, um, yeah, on the webinar because I just didn't realise that probably I'm looking up as well. Um, I think these things you don't always, you just don't always realise that you're doing it until, you know, you show someone and they're like, oh, and then you kind of wonder why you get aches and pains and stuff. It's not surprising, really. So, yeah, really helpful. Thank you. Lots yeah. to um, take away and think about. No problem at all. And just showing the the extra slide on the end, that's just um, giving a sit stand platform option that could be placed onto any static work mm-hmm. surface to achieve the sit stand, um, you know, function throughout the day to try and reduce the, the amount of time that you're sitting sedentary mm-hmm. throughout the day. Um, but hopefully that will help you with with improving the setup and reducing some of your discomforts so I'm going to go through some um, uh, information on exercises but thank you for your time Kate thank Um, you and uh, take care of yourself thanks So here we've got just a a PDF leaflet, uh, which can be accessed on our website in the help and advice section. And it just gives some generic exercises and movement that you can do at the workstation to help reduce some of the discomforts often associated with static postures. So I'm going to hand back over to Catherine to have a look at our poll results. Yes, thank you for that. So um, thank you for filling in the polls and I've um, just got the results here. So um, we've actually got quite a positive thing um, saying, do you think your homework session is set up for your needs? And 72% of you said it is, which is great news. And I, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that because you know, homeworking for many of us, you know, part-time, full-time is, is, is here to stay. And I'm really pleased to see that people have it. Um, But I'm a little less pleased to see that the pain and discomfort that people are feeling, you know, that that people, you know, 4% have got, you know, eye pain, 6% with uh, neck pain, 14% with back pain, and 22% um, with a combination of problems. So there's quite a lot of things that um, that we could do with um, improving there. Um, Although, as I say, 55% said they have no pain. So that is great. That would said to me that people have got pretty decent workstations and they are moving. So that's that's really good news. So um, I think the poll is um, yeah so, some reasons to be cheerful on a on a wet Friday down here. So that's good. 
Now we've got um, a few minutes to look at some of our questions. So I think um, I'm going to sort of take a couple and I might ask Jody to, to chip in when she wishes. Um, but the first one, um, we've got a question about the provision of a furniture at cost to the employer. Now, I mean, this is quite a difficult one because it does depend on the employer's policies. It does depend how much you're working at home. But I think, you know, if you are working predominantly at home and your tasks are a lot of inputting at the workstation, then I think most employers should and probably will um, contribute to the home working equipment. I think for people who do less frequent um, time at home or possibly perhaps more teams meetings or telephone calls then that may be less clear cut but I think a lot of our clients that we deal with do provide equipment for uh, their staff working at home so I think hopefully that provides a steer it's not a very easy clear answer to be able to give um, I don't know Jodie would you like to comment um, there's a gentleman or, or, or somebody asking about a standing desk and standing all day, and I've heard this is bad for you. Would it go be better to go back to sitting, but break for a little walk or stretch every thirty to sixty minutes? Have you, do you want to add to that since you were talking about hedges uh, yeah. rotation? Yeah. So going back to the the, the hedges threes idea, um, as I mentioned, you know, it was a piece of research done at a university to look at the optimal um, way to balance the day. So that that optimal um break is within a 30 minute period you want to sit for 20 stand for eight and move for two minutes with a sit stand desk i mean personally i'm quite sedentary in the evening so i stand a lot more in the day so i i sort of gauge it on lifestyle as well um and and also based on my aches and pains so you know through the day if you're feeling uncomfortable and you need that change of posture that's a good indication to stand up and work for a bit and then if you start to feel a bit uncomfortable when you're standing maybe leaning on one leg leaning forward on the desk um that is a good indication just to sit down for a few minutes and having the adjustable workstation it really gives you that flexibility so that you can carry on working and being productive rather than having to take that time and movement away from the desk which also can be restricted in a lot of job roles especially if they're phone based um, so there are a lot, a lot of different options out there for achieving a sit-stand workstation option um, you know there's platforms that go on existing desks you can get full height adjustable desks that are electric or manual so there are a, a, a lot of different things to, to choose from but the hedges three idea is a, is a great pattern to follow um, to get yourself started and, and to see how you can manage with the sit stand function. Yeah, it's it, it's basically it's not one or the other. It's a nice combination of sit stand and move, isn't it? It's it, it's the movement yeah. that the human really really appreciates. Yeah. Um, a nice simple one, which um, which I'll answer is I've got a I've got a question. How bad for you is it working on the sofa with a laptop on a laptop tray? Oh and I would go. <laughs> In general, it's not good for you. You know, it, 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 you're probably not getting the back support. You're probably hunched over. You're probably looking down. But if you're on a Teams call and you're not actually inputting, and if you're doing it for short periods during the day, it's probably okay. But if you're doing any inputting or there for any length of time, I would say it really is not a good thing to be doing on a regular basis. Um, so I think I'll probably just to draw a line under that one um, and say, if you're doing this regularly, I would suggest trying to find a better way to work. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, gosh, um, just tried to look at the, uh, um, so we've got a question about getting um, pain and tingling in, 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 the, in the right hand. Somebody says they already have a, an ergonomic vertical mouse. Is there anything else they can do? Um, well, my initial thoughts on that is absolutely check your heights. I don't know about you, Jody, but I'm often finding that you know, if people are sitting too high or too low. You can have all the best equipment in the world, but the angles are off. So absolutely check that you've got you know, your keyboard and your mouse at about elbow height and that your arms are nice and close to you. Um, and then 
if you're still getting problems, make sure the breaks and changes of activity are going ahead. Make sure you take the opportunity to shake your hands out. Um, and also just if it's still getting problems, look at the tasks you do. Are you frequently toggling between screens or something like that? Is there an action that you're doing on a regular basis that you need to look at? Um, so there's quite a few things apart from just an ergonomic mouse, but get the basics right and then see how you work. Yeah, another important thing with the vertical mice is if you've got a wrist support in place with it, so a you know a mouse wrist rest. You know we want the the arm. The whole point of the mouse is to keep the arm and the wrist nice and straight. So if you've got a mouse rest, you'll end up with a bit of a bend. So get rid of the mouse rest if you've got the vertical mouse. Yeah, good point. Thank you for that. Um, there's a there's a couple of people asking about um, exercise and stretches, and I hope that that link that that Jody uh, pointed to um, will be helpful for that. We will be sending that out with the email afterwards, so I hope that that will answer that question. Um, and there's a couple of questions about using non um, operators chair, non traditional office chairs at home, um, and I would say, well, you know. If you're, it depends how long you're working at your workstation as to you know the investment you need to put in the chair. But if you've got a non-adjustable chair, but it supports you in a good position, I probably wouldn't be too worried about it. The thing is getting your position right and getting the support right rather than anything else. Um, yes, the regulations you know, suggest we should, um, well, require us to have operator's chair, but they do that to get us in the right position with the right support. So please keep that in mind rather than getting too hung up on, you know, on anything else. Yeah. Um, An interesting question, I think, that ties in with that as well is, are ergonomic kneeling stools good to use from time to time? Um, you know, the, the kneeling stools are something that we get asked of, about a lot. And um, I think you might agree, Catherine, that to, to use a kneeling stool all day probably isn't great because it's putting pressure on the knees. Um, so that could cause issues there. And also, actually, you're activating your core muscles when you're using a kneeling stool. So you could actually end up overworking those muscles and that could cause some fatigue and discomfort as well. So from time to time, yeah um and you know there was a question about a yoga ball as well so those sort of things are more of um an exercise that you can implement intermittently through the day but to sit on pro for prolonged periods it wouldn't be advised i think that's the thing isn't it you know exercise is really good for us movement is really good for us but trying to exercise whilst you're working can be a bit of a conflict it can also change your concentration so yes periods of time to move to stretch but probably trying to exercise whilst you're moving is probably a step too far for most of us or certainly a step too far for me yeah um so i think and i think we're all different and we all know our capabilities but if you ask up the the body to maintain its position too much it'll start to fatigue and you'll find that your position you want to achieve actually you'll start to lose and you may find yourself in a poor position. So I think it's a good point to raise there, Jodie. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question about dual screens and, and multiple screens. I think, you know, many people have two or three screens these days. And for, for me, it's going getting back to basics. When you think you want your, your body to be as straight as it can the majority of time. So if you have a dominant screen, that should be directly in front of you. So when you're spending most of your time, you're in a straight position. So if you've got a dominant screen, it should be directly in front of you. And then if you've got a secondary screen, it should be very close, similar position, but close to the dominant screen. If you really use two screens equally, then there's only one thing to do, and that's to get them as close as they possibly can. And you might want to consider now actually getting one big screen and then having the two applications on the one screen, because I think a lot of people are finding that too. So as technology changes, we need to adapt. But I would always say come back to the position that you want to achieve. Get the body in a nice, neutral position and well supported. And whatever it takes to do that is probably the right thing to do. Yeah. Have you spotted anything else there, Jodie, that, um, that that's, we've got a few questions on? 
there was um, an interesting question asking about the position when working with the phones. I thought that would, would be a good one to quickly cover. So, um, you know, when we're looking at a lot of hybrid working or sort of ergonomics on the go and traveling, we tend to use um, phones, iPads and that sort of thing. We really want to limit the amount of time that we're using those for. Um, we want to ideally make sure that the screens will bring in the screen closer up to the eye line rather than us looking down in this position. You'll see, uh, you know, a lot of children uh, are in that position. You know, we're at schools on laptops, university, colleges, and then we're in the workplace and we're still in that position. So it's really good, not just for yourself, but to encourage others to make sure if they are using any mobile devices that they're keeping that at a good position where their head is still balanced on the head and they're bringing the screen closer to the eye line rather than looking down. Yeah, I'm also a great fan of actually popping the screen on a shelf or something too you know so they don't have to hold it pop it down somewhere yeah um got a very quick one about armrests on chairs um what are your thoughts on chair armrests um i find that they always get in the way when i'm using my keyboard is it best to remove them completely well i love armrests on chairs if they don't affect your position. So I like quite small armrests, more like elbow supports. So they don't get in the way when you're getting close. If your armrests, if you can't adjust them and they are stopping you getting close to the keyboard, then I probably would remove them because it's really important to tuck yourself in nice and close because then your arms can be in the right position and you'll use the backrest of the chair. But ideally, some nice adjustable armrests that, that sit more at the back. So um you know, love armrests, but they've got to be right. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we've got a chance for one more. Have you got one? One you can see there, Jodie, that you and then I'll take one. Oh, there's an interesting one about writing notes in front of, of them. Um, so they've got the notebook in front and then the keyboard further away. Um, so that's a, a a good point to make because although we're very paperless now um, in a lot of environments, you know, people still are taking notes or referring to paper documents. And going back to some of the information and the videos that Catherine provided, we ideally want to always make sure that the keyboard's close to us um, when we're typing. So, you know, if you're working on the paperwork and then you're typing, move the equipment we want to adjust everything to us rather than us adjusting to the position document holders are good if you're copy typing you can get upright ones um, other, otherwise if you are writing on it as well you can get a slope that sits between the keyboard and the screen so it's keeping the paperwork central in line with the computer and elevated as well and you can make the notes as you might need to and you can actually get that the, the, the surface can come down over the keyboard too, can't it? So you yeah. can actually write ni nice and close and then push it out of the way when you want to type. So yeah. there are there's quite a lot of uh, adaptions out there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jodie. And uh, just a nice one to finish off is what's better, a trackball or an ergonomic mouse? Gosh, well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge one. <laughs> it really, I mean, trackballs are useful because, of course, they don't move. You're moving the cursor with your fingers. Now, um, that's great because it keeps their arm nice and still. And of course, the mouse doesn't move around the desk. However, it does put quite a lot of movement on the fingers. So it really depends on your own situation. I think some people find it having nice and static, nice and still for their shoulder is very helpful. Other people find actually that increased movement with their fingers a bit of a problem. So it is horses for courses. And um, I think just knowing what where you get pain and when you get pain will help direct you into probably what sort of input device works for you. Um, we're always here. We have a, a group of us called the DSC advice team who are available on chat and various other ways. Do go to our website and hopefully we can help you make a choice as to perhaps what might work for you or at least give you some options so you can look into. So please feel free to reach out to us for that. So I think I'm looking. Oh, gosh, we've gone over time, Jody. As normal, we're too much, too much chat from us. Yeah. Too. Thank Not you for your help. Yeah. Thank you for your <laughs> for your help today, Jody. And can I just thank no Kate, James, Jonathan, Elizabeth, and Rob for exposing themselves to, to, to us discussing. I hope that what we said was was helpful to them. But really, it's it's really, really helpful to have people to be prepared to come and show us their workstations. Um, I hope that um you will enjoy your weekends. 
and I hope that uh, many of you will come back and see us on our next webinar in about a month's time. Do go to our website, um, sign up for, for notifications, and then we'll let you know what we're talking about next. So thank you, everybody, and um, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye thank now. Thank you. Bye-bye.